down from that weirdness into even more weirdness. The basilisk. I don't know why the article decided to choose Google, that for it. Google an image of a basilisk. Um, so I, I know, I know, like, as far as I know from basilisks, they're lizards. I don't know about their old account. So the, the idea of this article is that it's a historic article. Right? So it's based off of the very first versions of all the creatures that we're mentioning. And so, like, apparently basilisks look like that. Apparently they look like, you know, half chicken, half lizard, half bat. Or I, I don't know what the hell it is. Um, but you, 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 you got me hooked with the kraken and there was, like, an actually valid argument for it. Then things went down. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. it just kept getting worse and worse. But it's still you know, like, yeah, because It's a chicken with a bat, and, like, it used to eat sheep. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Something like it's, a teacher who was trying to teach me Photoshop and how to put, like, different segments together. They're just putting different... You know what, guys? Yeah. This, this like, might the actually be the worst. dark ages. <laughs> this, this Photoshop might of the be... dark ages, I swear. This might be a whole other thing. This might be a whole other episode, guys. We might have actually unraveled the truth behind the coronavirus. It could have been from one of these creatures. Like, one of these creatures could actually exist. Like, specifically that half bad, half chicken. So, half this creature thing. caused the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and that is what someone ate at some point and got infected. But also COVID. speaking, if you eat something that looks like this, you deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> But why does everybody else have to suffer for your horrid, disgusting mistake? Damn. I mean, okay. that's some dry looking wing there. I want to eat that. That that really. I don't know. Some, some just just evil, man. I don't know. Off -putting. I mean, that, that neck so looks juicy, but like. <laughs> off putting. Don't even joke about that. That is nasty, man. Like, I know it's, it's Ramadan uh, <laughs> where we're at right now, but. You just, you didn't have to ruin my appetite for years to come. <laughs> oh God, no, I never want to remember that ever again. <laughs> Basically, like, we're supposed to be discussing them seriously. We're like, oh, this guy's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get, let's get serious about it. So accounts of the Pearson Basilisk date back to the first century Roman writer, Pliny the Elder whose famous natural history included entries on the fantastical creatures and exotic races of the formed men. I wouldn't say just men. Like, they must have had some real issues. It's not just men they deformed here. Pliny described the basilisk as a snake-like animal with markings on its head that resembled a crown. But by the Middle Ages, it had morphed into a fiendish serpent with the head of a rooster and the wings of a dragon or bat. So I guess we were on point on, on what this actually looked like. The yeah. basilisk was said to possess a deadly bite and venomous breath, but it could also kill a man just by looking at him. So he's got sort of like a Medusa superpower where apparently like, he could petrify just from eyesight. But, I mean, I, I don't imagine being seduced by this thing, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> imagine it, Who knows, man? Dude, 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 when you're hungry, when you're hungry, anything works, man. Like you can, who knows? When you're famished and you're in the middle of the desert and there's nothing else. This, this chicken How wing comes to me like, I am seducing you. <laughs> I'm like, I might go for it. How far would you be willing to go, man? <laughs> that's, that's what it's about. I think I'm going to die in a corner over there. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> would be oh, basilisk conjures and uh, countered this death stare by carrying mirrors in the hope that the creature would meet its own gaze and drop dead. But they also enlisted the help of weasels, which were believed to be immune to its poison. Wow. Like, this is actually going in depth. About oh, wait, this. it also this has is, poison? That's, that's, this is, uh, that's a good skill. I mean, okay, so this is I mean, really odd. I mean, we're talking about a game developer, a game lore developer. He's got the background and everything. <laughs> no, so guys, oh, like uh, this is based off of history. I so this is based off of, wait. like, a historic event 
that's why it's mentioned. Uh, so someone oh, actually yeah. went and, and, and mentioned their own account of facing something like this. And so this is when it starts getting really weird. Like we're making, we're sitting making fun of this creature when at some point we might actually encounter one. So be careful, guys. Be careful of what you're Jesus. saying. <laughs> the, the, the skill uh, that it has that it says poison. I'm pretty be careful. sure someone would have documented this ugly creature of a specimen by now if it was still in existence. And you don't know, maybe the chicken seduced him. So, yeah. I wouldn't say so. Um, so before you take the camera, it seduces you. <laughs> I can't take this seriously. Sorry. That is wow. Okay, so the basilisk supposedly originated in North Africa, but tales of European encounters with it are found throughout the Middle Ages. One particularly dubious account from 1587 in Poland describes how a man clad in a mirror-covered leather suit hunted and captured a basilisk after it killed two small girls and a nursemaid. Okay, guys, this is just like way... This is way too serious right now. So, 1587... That chicken means business. 1587, that was... That was such a long time ago. That's like... Yeah. End of what, like 16th century? And so, like, I'm assuming a lot of things existed back then that don't exist these days. And so, something like that could have actually potentially existed. Um, Maybe like a chicken and a bat got it, got funky and for a while there <laughs> and reduce this thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Some bloodthirsty uh, uh, chicken. Bloodthirsty chicken. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know we're supposed to be because, serious. No, no, no. About I, I, I know, but, but guys, this seems like such an accurate account of an event that happened during that time. And so this is why I'm, I'm just confused. Like, should I be taking this seriously? Or, or like, is this all jokes at the end of the day? Because, yeah, like, I, I know, like, we wow. started to well with the crack, but we went down nice. to Mr. Chicken here. And, like... <laughs> I can't take it seriously That's when I look so at that picture, I mean. Enough of that, seriously, enough of that. <laughs> okay, so. Please give me a good monster. On to the next one. I've never heard of this one before. Uh, apparently, it's called the Blemye. Along with Very legends. Interesting. Grotesque monsters and sea creatures. Ancient and medieval travelers often return to Europe with tales of so-called wild men living in the unmapped regions of Asia and Africa. They what is so called homeless people? They <laughs> <laughs> don't shave at all. And, and that's not how they look like. <laughs> oh my god. I, mean, I, I don't know I've what seen kind some of homeless people. That's not how I, they I don't look know like. what kind of homeless people you know, buddy. But I don't want to <laughs> ever see... Like <laughs> Anyone on the street that looks like head. that, otherwise, I'm but, never leaving my home ever again. What is wait, that? Wait, wait, some wait. change, bro? Like, he's actually, like, reaching out with his hand, like, got some change. <laughs> I'm trying to look at the picture. Was that hair hanging down? That's so true. Oh. Like, he's actually, he has his hand pointed out, like, he... He wants some money or something. Like, hey man, got some change. <laughs> like, I'm hungry. <laughs> dude, dude, dude. Let's let's just take a second and, and try to make sense of what's between their legs. Uh, uh, like, it, it doesn't really are, 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 are we not? Are we not? Are we not going to talk about what that is? Like, are, are we just gonna let that hang? The way it's hanging right now. I think these are some <laughs> some some well endowed hobos. So I don't know, man. <laughs> this no. I see it has the heads of dogs, but I don't see it. Nah, dude. It's it's like I'm I'm starting to get worried now because now I feel like every time I pass by a, a homeless person begging for money, and I don't have change. And I just leave him be. I feel like I'm going to have to be watching my bag from now on. Even your that doesn't look like you, and you're just like, what is this mystical creature? The blimmy. It's a comic. The blimmy. 
<laughs> it's a blimier. Yep, that's oh. the one. Guys, if there's anything oh. to be learned from this, dear viewers, is always carry change from now on, because because you don't want to look over your back and, and see where those. You face with this guy. Wow. Okay. I so don't think one of will help them. Just like proper hygiene, some clothing, you know, some food. Get a get a stable That's job, nice. insurance. Ahead, yeah, and those nights will like be stuck up and everything. Ahead, a second eye, maybe. Like, uh, are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> hey, man, look. Don't be, don't be superficial, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Beauty is also on the inside. One of the most unusual groups was the Bellmen, a race of hairy primitives who lacked heads but had a face situated in their upper body. The tribe first oh, appeared oh, oh. in Herodotus's The Histories, uh, where they were described as a species of headless men from North Africa who had their eyes in their chests. Uh, Herodotus is actually a really famous Greek uh, historian. Yeah, I actually remembered um, him after I after you showed me a picture of him. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's interesting that you know there's that he gave his own account of it, but at the same time, you know, you can't really take most of these philosophers seriously about their accounts since they didn't have the technology or or the science that we now have to actually come up with correct analysis yeah. about all of it. So, references to the Bellame or creatures like them later propped up in the writings of Pliny the Elder, the reports of Sir Walter Rayleigh, and even in the Shakespeare's Buffalo. Their exotic appearance served as an object of both fascination and disgust for Europeans, and they became a common motive and an art in the pre-enlightenment era. So you as an artist could possibly understand uh, where they're coming from. This. So this is basically an artistic rendition, not from the people who saw it, but from people who see the accounts. Exactly. And, uh, I still likely. don't understand the point of whatever is going on between their legs. Like that, like what, what sort of artistic rendition do you think they were going to? Because that is highly indicative of, of something that is disgusting, and I don't think it's right. Like I don't, I don't think maybe they had the wrong idea back then. They had sort of a different philosophy. I, I don't. What do you think? I honestly don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what to feel about this. <laughs> See, this is actually oh, coming from I, an artist, so so a, a humble person like me with no, hard, hard, with no hard background is just even more confused at this point. I they describe this as South African people, but with weird faces Well, Well, it's, it's, it's not like, I, I, I don't know how you're seeing it, what I'm seeing. Bro. Yeah, it, 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 not just the growth, but it, it, it looks like, you know, like they have sort of overgrown pubes. And so I don't yeah. I don't understand what the point of that was. Like they were they were styling their like that was a thing you could style your pubes and just like walk around with like, you know, spiky pubes or like a hairstyle down there and, and it would just look fashionable. I just feel like it has to be uh, an exaggeration of some sort. Wow. Maybe. <laughs> it's just so hard. I just can't. I, I wonder how I life imagine. would be if, if that actually carried on. You know, like if, if you had people walking around, like, styling around their downstairs region the same way these people did. But I don't even want to think. About Cause, um, it's just, okay, it's so pretend hard. you take this seriously. This kind okay. of um, weird happenstance of a face appearing in the shoulders like that. If it's believable, that would mean some sort of inbreeding or something malfunctioned because that's not a normal human shape having a face where the shoulders are at. That's just weird. Oh, yeah. so you're looking, you're looking at it from like a different perspective where, you know, it, it could have been that, like for example, uh, when you get deformed children born out of incest that could be the case of what's happening you know like 
they were deformed one way or another. It, it shouldn't necessarily be incest, but maybe oh, it was like some sort but of the, but this is nuclear, really cool, actually. nuclear radiation <laughs> that went overboard. Yeah. Um, off topic, off topic, but this is actually really cool. So there was um, a family that um, got stuck in the mountaintop. So of course they inbred with each other. Yeah. And their children had blue skin. Everyone in the lots of the family members had blue skin. Mm-hmm. Like look up actual blue people. So that that actually existed, or was that? That actually a... exists. It's an actual okay. thing. Because of inbreeding, they had blue skin. Interesting. Huh. So I guess anything yeah, could actually... happen. Anything could happen. So that that isn't as far fetched as as we might think it is, you know. Like maybe maybe that was going on downstairs, but you know maybe some form of deformity caused a certain race of people to appear a certain way, you know. Whether it's uh, I still think they should have it's... a head on top of your shoulders, having the head in between. That's still weird to me. In between the chest. I mean, it, it's not impossible to have your organs sort of smudge together and still be able to survive, like still be able to function. Yeah. But I think I think, I think the, the brain the brain is such a vital part that it, it really does need its its sort of own medium. Yeah, if the but, brain uh, was there it would yeah. need a protection of some yeah. Exactly. Uh who knows what's going on there. Oh wow. So apparently oh. there were they were cannibals. Oh, and I don't even I don't oh, even see is... like how that were how that would be possible. It doesn't look like they <laughs> could eat from anywhere in their bodies. And just, like, ch- really? <laughs> yeah, so their chest on like so here they eat. That's nasty looking. I don't know. I remember reading something a while back, um there's weird effects to people who do cannibalism too. I don't remember much, but it's just not yeah, they right, they become different. They become different. I believe it's it's a, a psychological thing, and, and I feel like it it also it, it causes some physical restraints on you. But I, I think it's mostly a psychological thing. Where if you yeah. start eating the flesh of another man, uh, you start losing your mind. Uh, kind of like how mad cow disease works, but it's on steroids. Yeah. 